by improving the quality and richness of data in domestic and cross-border payments. ISO 20022 will help speed up travel towards greater integration and digitization of the entire payment space. Joining us now is Pat Antona, Chief Customer Experience Officer at SWIFT. He's here to discuss how it'll help financial institutions better understand their customers, make quicker and better decisions, and improve services to end customers. Hi, Pat. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. Thanks for having me. So six months from the start of migration uh, to ISO, uh, how are the adoption levels looking? Yeah, it's a really great success in the start of the migration. It is a coexistence period. We're already seeing over 620,000 messages a day in 200 countries across thousands of endpoints. So it's really a, a good uptake and a good start to the coexistence period. Mm. Can you give us a little uh, a more context, uh, perhaps? Is this what you, you guys expected? Yeah, so there was a, a lot of time and a lot of effort from all the organizations in preparing. So many looked at it in the initial stages as a technical migration. How do I start that process um, to be ready for a new standard? We expected a, the start of the migration, the start of the coexistence, which is also happening with a lot of the market infrastructures at the same time. So we're comfortable with where we've started, but there's still a long way to go in order to be ready across the community for the end of 2025, where the coexistence period will end. Are you seeing any differences by geography or currency? Sure, so in the early stages, we're now seeing really what we probably expected, which is in Europe and the US, as the top senders uh, in that process. Uh, US dollars is the top clearing currency that we're seeing so far, but we have 15% of the market having already migrated, so it's a little bit too early to come to any conclusions based on that 15% that those are the corridors that are gonna remain the top players. Mm. So what has SWIFT been doing to, to sort of help the community, to support the community during this coexistence period? Yeah, so in the readiness, a great effort, I think, by the whole community to make sure that they were ready to be able to support the start of the coexistence because everyone needed to be able to consume ISO 2022 messages. So what we did at SWIFT in conjunction with the community was we put in, fl in flight in flow translation services. So that facilitates the coexistence period because you can either use the legacy MT or you can use ISO 2022 rich data during that coexistence. So it insulates from everyone having to move at the same time and supporting that coexistence. We just published an ebook with EY and a number of quotes from many different organizations on what are the benefits, the value that you're gonna get out of ISO 2022 beyond the technical uh, migration process. Uh, we also have multiple different libraries and mapping opportunities, whether it's on the front end or the back end of your organization to be able to facilitate that mapping to your legacy systems. You mentioned the, the benefits. Can you talk a little bit more about that? How will the community benefit from the richer data that ISO brings? Sure, I mean, the richer data becomes the foundation to, to what you're looking for. Um, there's efficiency opportunities in improving straight through processing. And then even when you have breaks and you're doing a request for information, that information's already there. So you have a lot more of that rich data, whether it's a happy flow or, or, or a conflicted flow, um, helps in the reconciliations as well. So on the efficiency side, definitely opportunities. On the risk management side as well, when you're screening transactions, having that richer data can help eliminate some of the false positives, but also catch the things that you didn't catch before because you didn't have that rich data as part of that process. Um, I think there's also additional value add opportunities that customers have to really differentiate themselves and look at new product offerings or greater customer experience to their end customers in the value that the data can bring in data services or just in greater transparency in the process and, and the information that's being provided. And then I think finally, a lot of conversations uh, at Cybos around AI, right? I think that's one of the big components and really the value of AI can only be gained if you have the right data and you have the rich data. So the value that you'll get out of that AI if you have that rich data, I think brings some other great opportunities. So what advice would you give customers who are considering starting their migration journey? Yeah, I think many of already done the first step, which is the technical, right? Um, the development that you need to do to be ready from a syntax perspective. Um, but the next stage to me is the integration. How do you now integrate that and use that and get the value from a business perspective in that process? So what we really tell folks is look at where you think you're gonna get the greatest value. Is it in the efficiency? Work with your internal teams or your reconciliation teams or your sanction screening teams to understand where they may see the value first. 
look at your product teams to see where they're going to get value out of the richer data and offering new solutions or greater transparency to the clients or your AI and technology teams if they need that richer data as part of their platform. Decide what's the best path for you. Get started with those little pieces and then go from there. Um, it's a journey. It's, it's not going to happen overnight. That's why there is the coexistence period. There's also the value in the integration with the market infrastructures that are also moving to ISO in many cases um, at the same time. So valuing that interoperability which sometimes is also a tipping point in the value of when you're going to go ISO native to also support not only the cross border, but integration with your market infrastructures. Before we let you go, we are on the last day of Cyboss this year, uh, and you have been very engaged in the standards forum this week where ISO has been a big uh, item on the agenda. Can you talk a little bit about how the week has gone and, and some of your highlights at Cyboss? Uh, great sessions. I mean, we had over 22 sessions, and <clears throat> the standards forum really brings together the community to talk about the challenges and the successes, right? What we're doing now, what we need to manage for the future. Um, so a lot of conversation on ISO 2022, a lot of conversation on AI, APIs, how can you leverage APIs with ISO 2022, the move um, in securities to T1 and, 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 and those impacts in standardization. So I think a great week for, for standards geeks, as they call themselves in a lot of cases, um, but always 100 to 200 people uh, standing room only at the standards forum. So a real success. Yeah. Well, Pat, it's been great having you here on Cybos TV. Uh, still a few more hours left. I believe yep. you're involved heavily later on yes. as well. So keep those energy levels high on the final day here in Toronto. It's been great to have you. Uh, Thank that's you. Pat Antonacci, Chief Customer Experience Officer at Swift.